What's up, YouTube? Mellow Item Matt here. You can see today we're on TTS. Well, this is a bit of a different video. Today we're actually going to do a tips and tricks and how to get set up for the basics of TTS so you can play games on there and actually just have fun with everyone. So it is going to be a bit of cuts and, cuts and jumps whilst I go between different screens to show you what needs to be done. But let's begin. Right, first one here is we are actually on Steam itself. As you can see, obviously, we've got TTS down here on the side. Please do ignore my other stock of games. I have got quite a few <laughs> weird wonderfuls. But what you want to do is we... First off, we actually need to build our deck for TTS. And to do, do that, you can do it two ways. One way is some of the tables do have pre-downloaded tables. Which have the bags on it, so you can build your decks that way. The way I prefer doing it, which I'm going to be showing you how to do in this video, is via the TTS Deck Builder. What we do is we go to here, go to this, we go to properties, and within properties we want to go to local files, and then once we're in local files we want to click browse. All right, and once you click on files it actually pops up with this screen here, so I'm literally having to jump between because it's being finickety with what it does and doesn't like. So once we're on this screen we don't actually need the steam part itself anymore so you can close that one down and from this screen here what you want to do is you want to go into the modding section then we want the deck builder itself then you want to click on tts deck builder right actually after you actually load the tts builder up you get sent to this screen once you've done that what you can do is you can drag the tts deck builder file itself actually out of that folder to either your desktop Copy and paste it in an easy to access folder so you don't need to go through all that method just to find it again. But once we're here, we actually now need to make our deck. So obviously if we go to start and then new deck, it then pops up with this size here. With width of 10, height of 7. Now you can customise this. So obviously you can do 10 and 5 for standard, um, standard overdress and V premium. So obviously they're only 50 card decks. But then you also want this one as well for the likes of pre, uh, premium directly. Because obviously you've got your 50 card main deck plus your 16 cards for your ride deck. Not ride deck. Extra deck. That's the word I'm thinking of. I premium, I promise. Right. So once that's done, you then load it up and you obviously get this black screen. So to actually fill up the black screen you need to drag cards in so the cards you can get from the images from the likes of the wiki discords that actually do card of the day channels you can grab the images from there Bush Road themselves both japanese and the english websites both do set lists with the card images where you can save those down for this situation here i have already as you can see pre-saved link jokers so for this example we'll drag this in and now, if we move back to this screen, you can see we now have our grid. I will cut this cut this from here, and I shall see you guys back once I've actually filled up the deck. Alright, we are back. I have got the deck now pre-built. I have swapped screen slightly, because obviously I need to actually capture the screen better to show you what's happening. So obviously we do file and save first, because you want to save it in case you need to come back and edit it at a later date. Obviously, for you, obviously, if you, you're not saving it yet, it'll come up with this screen here asking you where you want to save it, what you want to call it. So, obviously, for me, I called it CBD for Chaos Break Dragon. It then saves. And then after that, you want to export. It then comes up with this screen here. You don't need to touch any of this. It's literally all preset for you. Max deck size, image. Don't need to touch, you don't need to touch this, it'll save it to Imga. So obviously when you then go in game, it'll export import it. That's got no issues. You then should hit export. It'll then again ask you where you want to save it. So obviously for us, we'll click on I've already pre-done it because obviously I did it. This is the deck I made last night, but I'll just redo it again to show you. You then call it C B D and save it. Then after that we move over back to tabletop. Right, we are now back on the tabletop. So to actually import the deck, you your best are you can only import stuff if you are the owner of a room. So either single player, 
which is the highly recommended one. Or if you're the one creating the multiplayer room, you'll be able to spawn stuff in. But for this example, obviously, we'll hop into single player. Yep, yeah, right. So now we're in the single player. It comes up with this option here. So I will leave links in the description for the two tables I recommend downloading, which is this one here, which is the Carl Fight Vanguard four player table. This is the one that's got all the bags on that I was telling you about earlier. So you can build your own decks. The other one, obviously, I'll link in the description is the one that Different Fight has had made by Vanilla. I will obviously leave, also leave Vanilla's links in the description because obviously he deserves the credit for this server because he's the one that made it. But for this example, we're actually going to use the basic standard four player table. You then click load. Alright, we have now loaded in. So just come over here. So obviously we can see the table does come preloaded with snap zones for each of the important areas. These are axle, obviously axle circles for the the V premium side. Then for this, we then want to we now now we've created our deck. We now need to import the said deck. Obviously, we click ob objects, then we uh, click on components next. We then obviously we're trying to import cards, so obviously we'd import cards. Now here's where it gets interesting. Obviously, you want either custom deck or custom card. We then obviously in this situation we want to import a custom deck. Obviously, do that. Once you've clicked on it, it left clicked it once. You then right click it because obviously you don't want to, don't want to import any more in. And then you'll see this box appear. This is where it gets interesting. So here, obviously face. You want to browse local files. So you won't actually see the file folder on my screen again because obviously. But it blocks all file fo folders because it's not directly linked to the game. But you then locate to where you're, you've stored the front of your deck. So obviously I've gone to my link jug folder, found the CBD file. Then you click open. It will then... Come on game. Okay, you've not bought and play nice. CBD. And then, here we go. It'll then pop up saying upload file to Steam Cloud or load from your local dish. You want cloud if you're doing multiplayer. So obviously in our situations we'll always click cloud. It'll then ask you for an upload file where you'd like to upload the image to. Just leave it as root folder and click upload. It then starts wearing. This is it uploading it to the cloud. It'll stop wearing once it's done. But whilst it's doing that, we'll then upload our back image. Back image would be your sleeves, or what you want the backs of the cards to look like. You can get any of these. You can literally go online, pick any picture you want. It'll. You can customise your sleeves how you want. So for our situation, for Chaos Broker Dragon, I am going to use the Team Blackout sleeves that I've already got pre-installed. So again, Cloud will mean you can use it multiplayer. So we click that again. And then upload on the upload files. As they're thinking. Whilst they're doing that, we'll carry on the next options down. Width and height is what you've literally set your bit to in the DTS deck builder. So for our situation, obviously we did 10 by 7 so that stays the same. Then the number is the number of cards in said deck. So obviously you set it to 50 or you set it to 66 or 70. Depends how you want to do it. For our situation, we obviously want a 50 card deck. So then sideways... It's literally decides how you want the how the images are actually loaded in, in TTS Deck Builder. So for us, we leave it blank. And the back is hidden. What this what this means is instead of using the last slot on the face image, for the hidden card on the back, the hidden card on the back, for the hidden card. So basically, back is hidden. Is what something you always want to check. So this what this basically means. I mean. Instead of using the face image, because obviously you've got the set, you've got the screen layouts set up, it will not automatically take the last slot of the deck builder as your back, unless you click this and you use this, and you click import, and as you see, our little deck is now imported. Obviously, we'll drag it over to the deck zone for easy exampling. As you see, flip it over. Still white at the moment. The reason that is, 
is because up here you can see it's still loading in. We're at 50% loadings. So we wait for this to actually load in. Uh, as you can see, it's now loaded in. But you can see it's kind of small compared to the actual deck size itself. So what we're going to move on to now is little fun commands that you can use to speed things up a little bit. Obviously, you can scale it up by pressing Control and Plus, And then every time you tap the plus, you can see it's increasing. But as you can see here, for example, I've accidentally gone too big. So Control and Minus will let you do the same in reverse and decrease the size of the deck, as you can see here. So obviously, when you start in a game, we're going to use this as an example. Grab our starter out, and then you want to randomize. You can either right click and shuffle, which is right at the top here. But as you can hover over shuffle, you can see the R. So obviously, just hovering over at the deck like this and pressing the R button, as you can see, we'll randomize it. So obviously, this would be your shuffling. Then obviously, drawing cards. You can either do the manual method of literally grabbing the top card and maneuvering it to your hand zone, which is up here, and then flip. Or the even faster option, which a lot of people do, is you can tap the number keys. Like, one will draw me one card. Two draws me two cards. If, I can, if you quickly tap, like... One and two together, that would let you draw 12 cards. Say, for example, obviously, we'll now grab the... It's, uh, you can shake the mouse and it'll group them all together. The other method you can do if you don't want to shake your mouse is if you hi drag and highlight over something and then press the, press the letter G, it'll group them together. It'll group them together for you. Obviously, you can then restack them on top. Pick up the entire stack, you want to click and hold and maneuver it. Whereas a small click and move, grab the top card only. Whilst you're in this top card only move, if you hover over deck and tap the right click, you'll actually grab two cards. You can see here. And obviously, whilst you're this, you can still keep tapping if you need to grab more cards. Grab your five card hand that way. So obviously now we want to find our starter in all this, who is right here. Obviously for that you what you do is you right click and search, and that will let you bring up that deck menu at the side. But we'll go back to this screen a second, so we'll shuffle back up again as if we're starting a game. Say we draw five cards. This is our opening hand here, and as you can see we've got the one, the two, the three, but we don't really need the Palladium to start with. So normally, in a game on a Vanguard and the TCG, you tuck it to the bottom of the deck. Now, there are two ways to do it. Obviously, you can flip it back face down again with the F key and do that. And then move it back. But a handier way of doing it, which will grab Mr. Palladium back out again, put your back face down. And whilst you're holding the left key, tap right with nothing underneath it. It actually pushes it all the way down to the table. And you can then slide it under the deck. This works in the situations of, if you look, give me two seconds. For example, we've rode up this and we need to soul charge. Do the same thing there. And you can slide it under. It only works if there is a two card or higher deck. It, it reads it as a deck. Obviously, in this example here, we'll try and slide Crush and Claw underneath. And as you can see... It's not sliding underneath. And another example. Say this is face down. This is face down. And we've got this on top. If we try and slide this underneath. It won't work. Because the way it's facing. Is the same as this one. And it's only a one card deck. If we then flip it over for example. And then slide it under. You get errors again. Because. Obviously card we wanted face down so example here if we do it again with this way that's done it fine because obviously we're the right way but then if you do it the other way because obviously we're two for the right way that works as well because both are then treated as decks so fun little combos for actually 
creating stacks, doing extra soul charges. But it is important to note, you do have to be careful with that command because it can cause bugs if you've not got what full stacks on one side or the other. Another little tip, tip to do, rotation direct degrees. When you most people start off, it'll start off with 15 degrees. So obviously, when you're trying to rotate your cards left and right, as you can see, it doesn't do it right. So make sure this is always set to 90 degrees. Then when you do the Q and the E cards to represent you attacking or resting or standing, anything like that, it then automatically moves it to 90 degrees. Another example I want to do, which we shall grab this bag for, because this has likely got stuff pre-done on it. Um, sets 1 to 3, we want the bag for set 3. Because this is the stuff. We then grab this out, let this load in. As you can see here, we have got Japanese cards. But if you hover over it, as you can see, we've got the name and the actual effect on it. How does this happen? If you right-click on it, you can see down at the bottom of this menu here, we've got name and description. This can literally be edited by anyone to show name, card effects. So, for example, we can change this to YouTube. And we can put this as Twitch, for example. Just basic examples. Keep not normal words. And you say, see now, when you hover over it, it's got YouTube as the name, Twitch as the description. One important thing I did forget to cover once whilst importing a deck. Once you have imported it, to save it, keep importing it multiple times over. You want to keep it as a stack. And right click. And then you want to click save object. They'll then ask you where you want to save it in your folders. Obviously, for me, I've got Overdress Premium Standard. Then I obviously split Overdress further because obviously testing more of the Overdress stuff to get content. So in this case, our Chaos Breaker Dragon is in the V Standard format. So we would go to the Standard folder. We then type in a name for it, which will be CBD. And click Save. Now, whenever we want to play it again afterwards... We can now go to Object, Saved Objects, and if we go to our Standard Folder, you can see Chaos Broker Dragon is sitting right up here to use. Now we've covered the basics of commands and what you're going to need, what you're not going to need. I'll show you how now how to create rooms and join other people's rooms. That is a co another common question I do see come up quite often. Let's just exit back to the main menu. I'll see you when I get there. Right, we are now back to the actual main menu itself. So, to create a multiplayer room, you would go create, then multiplayer. Then, obviously, this bit here is where you, what you customise. Server name can be whatever you want it to be. So, for this example, we shall have it as Vanguard. Now, the server type is how you want people to join. Public means anyone can join the room. Friends, this limits to who is actually on your Steam friends list. And invite is only, people can only join the room if you directly invite them into the game. Obviously, password, you can choose to set passwords for public servers, or you can choose to leave it empty so anyone can join in. So for this one example, we shall use the password testing. Then maximum players can choose how many people you want directly in the room. Most people normally set it to two people, so you and your opponent, so no one else can come in and muck around with the stuff. For the four player room, some people do set it up to four, so you can have two people playing onto, onto the two separate tables. And some people do extend it up to the likes of 6 and 8 if you've got people that want to actually directly spectate the game. So for our example, we're going to do the invite room. Because obviously we don't need public room. Because I want to show you how to do the inviting thing. 
then obviously password's left blank and maximum players will have it as four because obviously we're inviting we can control who's in the room and who's not in the room we then create a server and it comes up with this screen again of how, which table you'd like to select so for this example we'll go with the card fight vanguard four player table again And obviously the room spawns in. Then to invite people, because so, obviously we're invite only, you'd then click on the plus arrow. It then opens it up in Steam with who you'd like to invite. Obviously, oh, it's not. This isn't showing on your screen, but it'll come, it comes up with a little Steam tab of choose friends to invite. I will edit this in on post edit. So people I can actually invite to play the game. So I can show you what the screen actually looks like. You then click invite next to their name. And then obviously they then get a pop-up on their side saying, would you like to join this room? But what we'll do is we'll obviously close the room now. Because I want to show you how to... It say, some, say for example, someone else has set up a room and you want to join it. How would you go about it? So this is where instead of create, clicking on the create button to go to multiplayer... You instead click the join button and on the join button you'll then see this menu pop up here you can see server name game host players and where they're based so for our example we want to find someone playing card fight vanguard so you would search the word card fight and obviously in this example we can see bobo is from bobo is card fight vanguard owned by jelly is my coffee so obviously if we add the password to that we could join that one. But you don't have to search by this. So, for example, obviously, we're going to search for Digipanda. So, Digi. We found Digipanda. We search for the server name. So, in the example, we'll go for the 40k one next. Uh, that's more like the worst example I could have asked for. <laughs> so, we're going to search for the room name Killer Kill. Now off this, obviously we found Killer Kill. So you can this search browser can literally find anything. It can find the server name, game, host. It will show you the entire list. If you've got your refresh button up here, just show you some. I'm not going to be able to join any of these rooms because I haven't got the passwords for them. But obviously, once you double click on a room, it then asks you for server password. These are case sensitive. I am going to be very adamant on that. But once you're in the room, we're going to obviously go back to our room a second so I can show you a few more tips and tricks. So we're going to go create our room again. So we have a four player table. Then up here, obviously, when they spawn in, there'll be an extra option here for other people. It will say promote. So you can promote them so they can spawn their own stuff in. And what they can and can't control. Obviously the colours themselves are designated to where you're sitting on the table. So obviously, say my opponent, I'm sitting at white. My opponent then would need to click on the yellow colour. They can do that themselves. The owner can force to set them. The other option there is, I'll just that will sell back to white a second, is the change team option. Now these teams... The diamonds, hearts, spades, clubs, and jokers. That controls of, say for example, I set myself as diamonds. And then someone else joins the room and they set themselves as diamonds. They can then see your public, your private zones. So your hand or any other games that have got other private zones set up. They'll be able to see them as well. So obviously if you've got spectators, you can have... Me on diamonds, my opponent could be sitting on hearts, and then other people that join to spectate can pick hearts or diamonds so they can view hands and see different things about it. But that very much does cover the basics of Tabletop Simulator. If you like what you've seen, please do like and subscribe. It very much has helped the channel. Leave a note in the comments if it's been helpful. If you think there's bits I've missed, I can try and help you out in the comments in case something else has come up. But I'll just catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.